Welcome to KXAN News Today. Here's your Friday morning headlines. San Antonio police say they are searching for two persons of interest in the deaths of two young parents-to-be. Pregnant teen Savannah Soto and her boyfriend, Matthew Guerra, were found dead in his car in San Antonio earlier this week. In the video, you can see a black pickup truck approach the silver car where the bodies were eventually found Wednesday. They're looking for the driver of that pickup and the person who got out of that silver car. And a house fire is out after crews responded around midnight near East MLK and 183. Austin Fire sharing this photo saying a home on Bundy Hill Drive caught on fire. One person was evacuated and is expected to be okay. Boeing is urging airlines to inspect 737 MAX planes to look for a possible loose bolt in the rudder control system. All new 737 MAXs will undergo the check before they're handed over to customers. So far, Alaska, United, and American Airlines say they don't anticipate operations to be impacted by this. And this morning looks to bring the coldest temperatures of the week with a near widespread freeze, even here in Austin. Good morning. I'm Dylan McKim. And I'm Nabil Ramadna. Yeah, a cold one out there this morning, yeah. and you said near freezing almost. Near freezing for most of us. Downtown may stay just above, but we think most neighborhoods away from Austin will get a little bit below freezing. Outside right now from our Barron's Creek Vineyards camera in Fredericksburg, a clear sky. We don't have the morning clouds that we started with at least a little bit of yesterday morning, and we've still got light winds that will allow the temperatures to keep dropping. These are not yet at our morning lows. That won't happen for another two and a half to three hours or so. So these numbers will keep dropping, but we're already to freezing in Lampasas. San Saba and Mason are below freezing. 38 now in Austin. We expect we'll end up down at about 33 or 34 uh, downtown here this morning. Temperatures in most places are a few degrees colder than this time yesterday, and clouds and radar is completely clear. So you can see over the next few hours, if you're heading out early, 34 at 6 and 8, and then we start our temperature climb so that by 10, full sunshine and still chilly at 46 degrees. Coming up in first morning weather, we've got this near freezing start. We may be near freezing again tomorrow morning as well. We'll track that, a weekend warm up, and a cold, wet start to the new year. All right, thank you, Nick. A silver alert has been issued out of Kyle. Police are looking for 74-year-old Leonard Diggs. Yeah, he was last seen around 5 yesterday afternoon on Kyle Parkway in a red 2019 Hyundai Santa Fe. Diggs has a cognitive impairment. If you have any information on his whereabouts, be sure to call the Kyle Police Department. Well, it didn't get cold enough overnight for those cold shelters to open in Austin, but with more cold weather ahead, many who live on the streets are in need. That's right, KXN's Grace Reader shares the criteria to open and why there is a big need. The threshold for the city of Austin to open its cold weather shelters this winter, if it's going to be 32 degrees or freezing throughout the night, if it's going to be 35 degrees or colder with rain or snow, or if it's forecast to be 35, but the wind chill is at freezing. That last bullet is a recent change. When we talked with the different community members and understood that the wind chill uh, has just as great a factor on someone who is outside and unsheltered, or that we decided to include that. Other changes this year, the Austin Area Urban League, a nonprofit that helps with health, housing, and equity, will staff those overnight shelters, which if needed, will pop up in Austin Recreation Centers. That change came after a 2022 audit showed city staff with inadequate training were working those cold weather shelters previously. Additionally, the Homeless Strategy Office will take over a text system, which alerts people to the shelter's opening. The feedback we get is that uh, a lot of individuals who are unsheltered do have cell phones and receive those messages and appreciate it. While those shelters help rapidly expand capacity, day to day there's still a massive need. According to the latest data from the Ending Community Homelessness Coalition, or ECHO, there are roughly 1,380 shelter beds in our community, of which 80% are full. That leaves just over 200 shelter beds for those in need. And our estimate of unsheltered homelessness is over 5,000. So we estimate that there are over 5,000 people experiencing homelessness in the community beyond the shelter capacity of our system. Grace Reader, KXAN News. 
People sign up for these cold weather shelters at the One Texas Center near Barton Springs Road and South First. From there, people will be shuttled to shelters. Now, you can bring pets, your belongings, and there are no eligibility requirements. Going in depth here, Echo says one of the issues Austin faces in getting people off the streets is the disproportionate number of people experiencing chronic homelessness. That means someone who is homeless for long periods of time or multiple times. People in that situation situation often require not only housing but wraparound services like mental health treatment that makes getting people out of emergency shelters and off the streets very expensive for the city. Now this morning, Israeli military expresses regret over civilian deaths after an Israeli strike hit a central Gaza refugee camp on Christmas Eve. Yeah, the IDF also acknowledged the preventable deaths of three hostages killed earlier this month. NBC's Josh Letterman has the latest from Tel Aviv. Good morning. Hey, good morning. Israel is acknowledging serious mistakes in its war against Hamas, including unintentionally killing civilians in a Christmas Eve strike on a refugee camp in central Gaza. They also say that the killing of three hostages earlier this month by Israeli troops in a friendly fire incident could have been prevented. All of that as a U.S. citizen believed to be held hostage in the Gaza Strip is now confirmed dead. We will have all of the details and much more coming up on today. Well, a town like YMCA and a local nonprofit are teaming up to give refugees a chance to show off their crafts this weekend. The Refugee Holiday Arts and Crafts Bazaar is a free event showcasing the work of refugees from Ukraine and Afghanistan who recently settled in Austin. The handmade goods include jewelry, handbags, paintings, fresh baked pastries, and more. It's from 9 in the morning to 1 in the after afternoon tomorrow at the Y on West Cesar Chavez. You can check out more details on this event at KXAN.com. Another state removing former President Trump from its ballot. Why the decision isn't final just yet. The center right here in Austin working to help people as millions risk losing health care under Medicaid reevaluation. Four thirty-nine, the time right now. This is a live look as Austin fire crews are putting out what's left of a fire at a vacant house. It's at a home on Kemp Street off of Montopolis and Ed Bluestein. The fire started in the garage just about an hour or so ago. No other homes are damaged and no one is hurt. Well, Maine's top election official has decided to remove former President Donald Trump from the state's presidential primary election ballot. Maine becomes the second state to disqualify Trump from its 2024 primary ballot on 14th Amendment grounds. The move comes after Colorado's state Supreme Court ruled on the issue last week, citing Trump's role in the January 6th attack on the U.S. Capitol. Maine's Democratic Secretary of State ruled Trump ineligible due to his actions around January 6th. The decision will not be enforced until the courts weigh in on the issue, though. A statement released by Trump's campaign spokesperson says, quote, we will quickly file a legal objection in state court to prevent this atrocious decision in Maine from taking effect. Well, just ahead on KXA News today, are you planning to celebrate the new year with alcohol? while you may want to get your shopping done early. The challenges businesses, law enforcement, and prosecutors face with unhoused individuals who commit crimes downtown as new details on murder on Congress Avenue come to light. Good morning. At 4.44 the time right now, you're looking live at Coda. Still waiting for that sunrise this morning as we're having a really cold start to your Friday. And the countdown to New Year's Eve is on. And this morning on today, the preparations underway for major celebrations this weekend. And while the mood is festive, security is top of mind. Police are on high alert for large protests and lone wolf attacks, especially in major cities like New York, where close to one million people will watch the ball drop in Times Square. But of course, security is not the only focus this year. Also ahead on today, why this unique date is prompting more people to plan weddings for the final day of the year. And back here at home, it will be a dry New Year's holiday for Texans as state laws will shutter liquor stores from Saturday until January the 2nd. At KXAN's Mercedes Hernandez spoke with locals who say they're hitting the stores early before they lock up for 61 hours. Open signs at Texas liquor stores will go dark this weekend because of established laws, one dating back to the Prohibition era. 
It's between me and the grocery store. The Texas Liquor Control Act says liquor stores can't be open on Sundays or on major holidays like Christmas and New Year's Day. Because of that, all stores will be closed starting Saturday night through Tuesday morning. Yeah, I was unaware, but I'm glad I'm here today to buy it. But uh, yeah, I mean, New Year's must be a big day for people to buy liquor, and that's not a great day to be closed. Arun Chatterjee says he didn't know about the long closure and that he's glad to get his shopping done in time. He says it should be up to business owners to decide whether or not to be open. You know, if the liquor store owner wants to be open, wants the business, that's great. And if they'd rather stay at home and sleep, that's great too. So, Governor Abbott signed a bill into law back in 2021 that says Texans can now buy beer and wine on Sundays. But the hard stuff has to stay on the shelves. Thankfully, I ran into you because I do need to do a little more shopping. This was for friends, but I need to do a little bit of shopping uh, before New Year's. In Austin. Mercedes Hernandez, KXAN News. Got to get out there and get all your stuff done here today if you're trying to get some uh, liquor. I remember uh, uh, last New Year's I tried making a vodka sauce pasta and mm -hmm. I didn't have any vodka and then uh, none of the liquor stores were open <laughs> and I'm trying to use it for cooking, not for consuming, but... You know yeah. they sell that stuff <laughs> yeah. at the, the grocery store already made, right? That's, well, I just, it's just better making it in. fresh. Just wanted to fill anyway, you Anyway, let's take you outside on what is a frigid start to your day. We're down to 38 now in Austin, but these numbers will keep falling up until about 7, 730, which is when we typically get our uh, coldest temperatures of the day. You can see the widespread 20s to the northwest of us. So these are what I expect our morning lows will be low 30s to freezing here. And then we'll see these numbers climbing after about 8 o'clock. You can see by 10, it's 40s, still chilly. It's going to be cold much of the day. We'll finally climb up to near 60 for highs this afternoon, thanks to the sunshine. And then we tumble back down again by 9 tonight, mid 40s. Overnight lows will be down near freezing one more time here for tomorrow morning before we try and do it again next week. But you can see the below freezing numbers in the hill country to begin your Saturday. I think we'll be down to about 35 in Austin, but away from Austin, especially in the suburbs, the rural areas. We may still be close to freezing here to begin the day tomorrow. But a warming wind out of the west-southwest tomorrow is going to help the numbers rise considerably. We'll be in the upper 60s to near 70 for your Saturday afternoon and even warmer for Sunday, the last day of the year. So we'll go with a high of 61 here today, sunny and cool. And then we're down near freezing again tonight, although expected to stay above freezing in Austin, down to 35. And then here's your weekend, the last two days of the year. Sunny and 69 Saturday, mostly sunny. A beautiful end to the year on Sunday, 72. But Sunday uh, midnight into Monday morning, a cold front comes in that's going to make it chilly uh, around the time we're flipping the switch into a new year and bring in lower 50s Monday into Tuesday. Eventually, we've got some rain coming. All eyes focusing on Tuesday being our best chance of rain. Numerous showers and an isolated storm expected. And rainfall amounts have been trending a little bit wetter. Anywhere from a quarter of an inch on the low end to about a half inch to an inch on the high end. Still nothing considerable, but sure, beneficial. There could even be a few wet snowflakes or sleet pellets that mix in in the hill country on Tuesday. This should be just about out of here on Wednesday when we wake up with increasing sun and some clouds around. By Thursday, clouds and sunshine as well, but we stay in the 50s next week. Looks chilly. All right, thank you very much, Nick. Police officer Christopher Taylor's duty status has changed with APD. He's the officer facing two murder charges for the deaths of Michael Ramos in 2020 and Maurice Da Silva in 2019. Officer Taylor is now on administrative duty with pay. The department tells us he will be providing administrative support to detectives. He was previously on administrative leave. Last month, jurors could not come to a decision in the Ramos case, leading to a mistrial. Going in depth, Taylor's attorneys have requested the court try him on the De Silva case instead of the Ramos case. In July 2019, Austin police said Dr. Maurice De Silva was having a mental breakdown and putting a knife to his own throat when officers arrived on scene. APD says Officer Taylor and another officer shot him. The judge is expected to decide on whether to try Taylor on that instead early next year. And when many Texan college students return to school after winter break, their campus diversity offices 
will be gone. According to the Texas Tribune, Senate Bill 17 requires public universities to end so-called diversity, equity, and inclusion work training and diversity statements in hiring processes. At the University of Texas, the UT System Board of Regents told KXAN back in August that they have been working to ensure compliance with the law while providing opportunity, access, and support to Texans of all backgrounds. And we spoke to Concordia University in North Austin, which is a private institution, meaning it wouldn't have to comply with the law. Concordia's provost told us diversity, equity, and inclusion is fundamental in serving its students who are mostly Hispanic and black. This is just one of 30 new laws going into effect on January the 1st. A millions of Americans risk losing health care under Medicaid reevaluation. One center here in Austin is working to re-enroll or help people keep their benefits. NBC's Zinkle Esemua reports. We've been seeing a lot of patients that have no idea um, that their Medicaid ended. Across the country, millions of Medicaid subscribers are at risk of losing health insurance. And when one doesn't have access to insurance, those decisions are being made based on, am I really as sick as I think I am? Do I really need to go? In Austin, Texas, Community Care Health Centers, a network offering free and low-cost care, is scrambling, not just to re-enroll, but also to educate the community on how to keep their coverage. We have been constantly busy all the time. For three years during the pandemic, Congress required Medicaid programs to keep people enrolled. It meant that our patients and their families had access to sustained benefits and had access to continuity in their Medicaid benefits. Uh, that is life changing, life altering. Now that continuous enrollment is over. We've never had 90 some million people enrolled in the program and we've never tried to do this all at once. So every state across the country is going through uh, this process as we speak. So far, over 11 million people have lost Medicaid coverage nationwide, according to the Kaiser Foundation's analysis of federal data. In the states that have data available, about 71% of people are losing coverage, not because they're ineligible, rather for procedural reasons, like missing paperwork. The sudden volume now putting a strain on states. Uh, just about a quarter of all the children losing Medicaid are in Texas. This is huge. Um, we've never seen a decline like this. The HSSC telling NBC News that as of December, it is taking an average of 60 days to complete an application for Medicaid. But Texas lawmakers want more. Over the summer, Congressman Lloyd Doggett and a dozen of his Democrat colleagues urged the Biden administration to take action and have since continued to push the agency to ensure the enrollment process is timely. And without federal intervention, more and more Texans Pregnant women, children, individuals with disability will be denied health care when they should not be. The Biden administration telling NBC News that they were working with Texas to fix the problem. We have met with the state, we have reviewed, and we did require uh, Texas to reinstate over 90,000 people that were incorrectly disenrolled from the program. This fall, HHS announced that half a million children regained coverage after working with states on reported systems issues. In the interim, as state agencies wrap up this year's Medicaid eligibility checks, community health care clinics like Dr. Forner's are stepping up. For someone who has a chronic disease or a disability, a lapse in coverage, can actually cause their existing medical condition to worsen significantly. Zinclair Samoa, NBC News. This is KXAN Sports, brought to you by Thomas J. Henry. Head coach Steve Sarkeesian has made it pretty clear he wants supreme athletes and big humans on both sides of the ball. You can find plenty of both on the defensive side of the ball, especially when you look at a defensive line that causes major problems for their opponents. Analysts around the country consider the Horns D-line elite, and so does Washington offensive coordinator Ryan Grubb. I think they got great front players, um, but I'm always amazed with how well their front is coached. I think Texas has done a phenomenal job with the technique and how hard those guys play. A big shout out to our D-line. Uh, they, they've been killing it all year, and we, we know that's a, that's a big positive, positive in us, and, and they help us in with the back end with just the timing and stuff like that, putting pressure on the quarterbacks and things like that. The two stars in the middle, Tavondre Sweat and Byron Murphy, get plenty of shine, but there are others who do damage like Baron Sorrell, who also is one of the Longhorns who is making a Louisiana homecoming as he hails from right here in New Orleans. 
I mean, that's the type of games you dream for. I mean, we got, we're on the, one of the biggest stages out there, and we're playing for something that's, that's I mean, it's, 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 it's going down in the history books. So, um, I mean, it's just just staying about the opportunity to play against those guys. They've been doing a good thing all season, and we've been doing some pretty good things. So it's going to be a very good matchup, and I'm excited to play this game. It's been a great experience. Uh, <clears throat> it's definitely different from New Orleans, but, uh, I mean, obviously I wanted to go out and, and, and learn some new things and, and uh, just develop as a player, and that's what I that's what I did, and I'm here being a better player, and I, I'm just I'm happy. It's such a, a blessing just to think about being able to play here, and um, I mean just being in those games and being here when LSU was in the uh, going for the national championship, and like playing. I mean watching those type of games is just thinking about the atmosphere and the love that the city has for the game and for the Superdome is just it's a great feeling to be here. This defensive line anchored a unit that allowed the fewest points per game and the fewest yards in the Big 12. Next job is to stop Washington's passing attack that is tops in the nation. From New Orleans, Jonathan Thomas, KXAN News. All right, thanks, Jonathan. For those listening on the KXAN News, uh, KXAN Today podcast, thanks for joining us. Here's what else we're tracking at 5 on KXAN Today. A case that gained national attention. Hear from Gypsy Rose's attorney as she's released after plotting to kill her abusive mother.